The foundation of quantum mechanics is explained by the following experiment. Suppose we have a wall with two holes. Suppose we shoot marbles at it, one marble at a time. Behind the wall, we have a cloth. Each time a marble hits the cloth, we mark where it landed. As marbles hit the cloth in the same spot more than once, we mark the red mark darker. Some marbles make it through the holes by bouncing off at an angle. But most marbles that make it through the holes continue in a straight line. After a while, there will be many red marks on the cloth. The darkest red marks will be directly behind the two holes. Now suppose the two holes are very narrow. Suppose the marble is very small. Now the result is very different. A striped pattern is produced. The marbles never hit the cloth in the areas between the stripes. All particles in the universe produce this striped pattern provided that both they and the holes are small enough. No matter how many times we repeat this experiment, and no matter what type of object we use to replace the marbles, the result is always the same. Only one known phenomena can explain this result. Waves. When a wave passes through a hole, it spreads out on the other side. If there are two holes, two waves are produced. When you have two waves, they interact with one another. In some areas they strengthen each other, and in other areas they cancel each other out. This creates a striped pattern. This is the exact same pattern that we saw before. This means that all objects really behave like waves. But if all objects behave like waves, then why don't we see a striped pattern for the large marbles? Large objects have much more energy than small objects. Waves have more energy by having a higher frequency. When waves with higher frequencies interact with one another, the pattern is different. Large objects have more energy, and they therefore behave like high-frequency waves. This is why large objects do not produce a striped pattern, but small objects do. But there's still a problem. For a wave to produce a striped pattern, 
each wave must simultaneously pass through both holes, so that there will be two new waves that interact with one another. But we're shooting the marbles at the wall only one marble at a time. This means that each marble must somehow simultaneously pass through both holes in order to create the striped pattern. Let's see if this is what actually happens by blocking one of the holes. The striped pattern disappears. Most of the marks are now directly behind the one open hole. Now let's block the other hole instead. Again, the darkest lines are directly behind the one open hole. But if we unblock both holes, the striped pattern returns. Areas that were hit many times when one of the holes was blocked are now never hit when both holes are open. This means that each marble really does have to simultaneously pass through both holes to produce a striped pattern. Let's test this by putting a detector in front of each hole. We should expect that both detectors will simultaneously indicate that the marble passes through it. However, this is not what happens. Each marble only passes through one detector or the other, but never both. Also, once we place detectors in front of the holes, the striped pattern disappears. Now the darkest lines are directly behind the two holes, just as when we blocked one hole at a time. Let's try putting a detector in front of only one of the two holes. It turns out that having even just one detector has the same effect as having two detectors and causes the stripe pattern to disappear. Any attempt to discover which of the two holes the marble passes through forces the marble to pass through one hole or the other, and not both. One detector has the same effect as two because once we know if the marble passed through one hole, then we also automatically know whether or not it passed through the other one. A marble goes through both holes only when we are not trying to find out which hole it went through. But when we do try to find out, the marble goes through only one hole or the other. So what if we place detectors in front of both holes and just close our eyes and not look? We don't know for sure what is happening when we are not looking, but we do know what the mathematics describing the waves tells us. When waves pass through a detector, the waves are altered so that they can no longer interact with one another. This means that the striped pattern will disappear even if we are not watching it. The detectors will cause this to happen on their own. However, the mathematics also says that each wave still simultaneously passes through both holes, even with the detectors present. But when we open our eyes and look, 
We always see the detector indicating that the marble passed through only one hole or the other, and never both. Each wave still simultaneously passes through both holes, even with the detectors present. But when we open our eyes and look, we always see the detector indicating that the marble passed through only one hole or the other, and never both. This means that the marble must be more than just a wave. The wave only describes the probability of where we will see the marble when we look at it. The probability of the marble being at a particular location is given by the wave's amplitude. The higher the amplitude of the wave at a particular location, the higher the probability is that we will see the marble there when we look. This means that we can never simultaneously know both the position and the momentum. Before the wave hits the detector, we know exactly what direction the momentum is in. However, we know nothing about the object's position. Immediately after we see the marble hit the detector, we know exactly where its position is, but now we know nothing about the direction of the momentum. Not only are we not able to simultaneously measure the position and momentum of an object, the object does not even have a specific position or momentum until we observe it. If the marble always had a specific position, then the marble would not be able to go through both holes simultaneously, which is necessary to produce the striped pattern. But if all objects are just a wave of probability until we observe them, then this means that the detectors and all the objects the marbles interact with are just a wave of probability too. Suppose we place an object behind each of the two holes. The marble will knock down one of the two objects, depending on which hole it passes through. If we close our eyes and don't look, then the wave of probability passes through both holes, and each object being knocked down also becomes a wave of probability. Just as each marble simultaneously passes through both holes, each object is now simultaneously both standing up and knocked down. No matter how long we wait after the marbles have hit the objects, each object will continue to have a probability of still being in the standing position. And each object will also continue to have a probability of being in the knocked down position. According to the mathematics describing the probability waves, neither outcome is certain. It's only when we open our eyes and look that we see only one outcome or the other. It's not just that we ourselves do not know the outcome until we look. It seems that even the universe itself does not know which object is standing up and which object is knocked down until we actually open our eyes and observe the results. To explain why this is the case and what this means about the fundamental nature of